If you were at the 2021 Once Upon a Time in L.A. Music Festival, you were there to watch live performances and have a good time. But for Draco the Ruler, his night went differently. Draco arrived at the Bank of California Stadium in his Rolls Royce Don to perform in his hometown, after which his entourage of six men and one security guard were searched and stripped of any weapons. At around 8.30 p.m., Draco was backstage chilling with his homies when someone yelled, distinct team, and that's when it all went down. Draco and his team went to fight the op, but they were not prepared for what was about to happen next, because this wasn't going to be a fair fight or just another scuffle. From out of nowhere, a formless horde of about 40 to 60 men wearing gang colors joined the fight. But if you think these men were there to support the Stink Team, think again. And they weren't just wearing gang colors. They could all be here in holler and sue like a bunch of soldiers chanting the call to duty. Chaos ensued. Punches were exchanged, and someone in a black ski mask was handed an object that looked like a knife. At that very brief moment, Draco was separated from his team, and the man who was given the knife made his way to the rapper, after which... This is a developing story for us. Rapper Draco, the ruler, was stabbed to death at a concert in Exposition Park. Rapper Draco, the ruler, fatally stabbed behind the main stage area as a fight broke out around 8.30 p.m. Draco was stabbed in the neck, and paramedics arrived at 8.40 p.m. to rush him to the hospital. Unfortunately, Draco passed away at midnight. But his death leaves a few questions. How did Draco get involved in such a heated beef that as many as 40 to 60 gang members wanted him dead? What could Draco have done that his ops wanted to get him so bad that they did it at a concert? Daryl Caldwell, also known as Draco the Ruler, was born on the 1st of December, 1993 in South Central LA. He and his brother Devante Caldwell, AKA Ralphie the Plug, who was also a rapper, were raised by their mother. Their father wasn't in the picture, and their mother, Darlene Cornell, catered for the family with her job as a preschool teacher. Draco was raised in the 100 section of South Central LA. What part of LA are you from? I'm from South Central LA. The hundreds, the hundreds. <laughs> Just like another LA rapper and legend who you might know as Ice Cube, Draco attended Washington High School in Westmount, but Draco jumped off the porch at a very young age. By the age of 12, Draco had already caught in his first offense. He was arrested for stealing a dollar out of a tip jar. The young Draco was then shipped off to a correctional facility called The Camp, but this camp didn't seem to have any effect on Draco. During this period, Draco floated among many of these correctional facilities as he was frequently involved in various crimes, including burglary and gun possession. By the age of 15, Draco was shot at Washington High School, and that's when the school authority decided that they had enough. Draco was kicked out of school and became a permanent feature on the streets. So Draco started making money through home invasions, or as he called it, flu flamming. But Draco also had an interest in entertainment. He and his brother Ralphie the Plug began a dance crew known as Too Greedy. Still, members of Too Greedy also became popular for house robbery, mostly targeting Asian households for their dealings. After some time, the Too Greedy team also became known as the Stink Team, and this was around the same time that Draco began rapping. Draco states that he always wanted to rap because he saw it as a way of escaping the dangers of the street. Draco and his Stink Team released several mixtapes and hits that made them a prominent name on the streets of LA. And in early 2011, Draco began using YouTube as a platform to showcase his talent. He dropped several freestyles over other rappers' beats, but it wasn't until 2013 that he took his career to another level. Draco dropped his debut mixtape, Nervous Music, and then dropped another mixtape titled Mr. Mosley in 2014. Many of his tracks during this period featured various members of the Stink Team. And in early 2015, Draco released his breakthrough song, Mr. Get Doe. This song got a lot of people to pay attention to Draco's talent, and one such person was DJ Mustard. He got a remix with DJ Mustard, RJ, and Choice. But it was also during this period that Draco started having issues with the feds, because while he claims that the Stink Team is a group of rappers, the feds believed otherwise. The LAPD categorized the Stink Team as a gang. Prosecutors claim that the Stink Team was a ruthless gang of home invaders with 20 to 30 members, because many of these members belonged to Crip sets, rolling 100s and rolling 40s. Members of the Stink Team include Say So to Mac, Good Finesse, Money Monk, Rebel, Bambino, Catchy the Great, Kells, who's a member of the Rolling 100s, Young Bull, a member of the Rolling 30s, Too Shitty, a member of the Rolling 60s, 
while Draco and his brother Ralphie the Plug were two top members of the group. But unfortunately, it wasn't long before the Stink Team got in some serious trouble. On the 10th of December 2016, Draco and several members of the Stink Team went for a naughty or nice pajama jam party. They arrived at the venue at the 100 block of West Victoria Street with a five-car convoy. Another member of the team, AB, joined them at the venue. The Stink Team were all in their cars waiting to go when Too Shitty approached Draco's car window and informed him that the members of the Inglewood Family Bloods, IFB, were at the party. The IFB had become the Stink Team's ops because many members of the Stink Team were members of the Rolling Crips. And although Draco didn't belong to any gang, the IFB saw him as one of their ops because he used to roll with a lot of Crips. Therefore, the Stink Team was worried about their presence. After Draco was told they were at the party, he ordered the Stink Team to leave immediately. However, just as they were about to leave, another IFB member known as Red Bull walked past him. Immediately, Kells and AB spotted him. They both opened fire without giving it a second thought. After catching several bullets, Red Bull was soaked in blood, but he still managed to stumble back into the venue while wheezing and gasping for air. Two other people were injured while Red Bull, who was shot multiple times, unfortunately died from his injuries. AB and Kells were actively involved in a feud against Red Bull Inglewood Family Bloods, so for them, they had just fully utilized an opportunity to take an op out. So while caught in the euphoria of popping one of their enemies, Kells turned to Draco and said, I emptied a clip on them dudes. The Stink Team jumped into their vehicles and drove back to Draco's apartment, which was only 15 minutes away from the venue. The shooting happened around 11.30 p.m. and the crew was unaware that the victim had died until they heard it on the news at around 3 a.m. the next day. After this incident, Draco would return to making music and drop individuals to his songs. Draco would drop some of the biggest hits of his career during this period. But what the rapper didn't know was that these videos would turn out to be his hubris. The feds were paying close attention to all of Draco's moves, and they stated that it was this video of the song Bully Breaker that helped them identify Draco's apartment. Draco then dropped the most viewed music video of his career, the video for the song Impatient Freestyle. In the video, Draco is seen having a good time with his homies, smoking, drinking, and many of them holding big pipes. The video would also feature another important character in Draco's story, his Mercedes GLE Coupe. However, this car would also turn out to be Draco's Achilles heel. The cops explained that this car matched the description given to them by eyewitnesses as one of the cars involved in Red Bull's murder. Draco's life was about to take a massive turn that no one saw coming. Draco found himself embroiled in a murder case that would become one of the most fascinating criminal cases to involve a rapper. On the 2nd of January 2017, Draco was celebrating the beginning of a new year with his family, members of the Stink Team, and several other of his homies. Their hands were saddled with drinks, and they had weapons lying around. But this atmosphere of celebration would soon change instantly. Police raided the rapper's house and arrested Draco, members of the Stink Team, his mother, and his sister. Draco was charged with six counts of unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon. However, the guns that were found in Draco's house weren't the ones that were used for the murder. So at this point, all the cops had were bullets, surveillance footage, and shell casings from a 38 and 40 caliber pistol. All of these weren't enough to make a case, but that would change very soon. While Draco and members of the Stink Team were in jail, the cops adopted a controversial tactic to get the answers they wanted. Just before the Stink Team was formally charged, they planted a jail informant who was wearing a wire in the same cell as Too Shitty, and Too Shitty unknowingly spilled the beans. He revealed that the shooter was AB, after which AB was arrested, and then they used the same strategy on him too. AB was a member of the Rolling Forties, so they put an informant who posed as an OG Forties member. This made AB comfortable, and it gave the feds an hour, 22 minute long evidence. The recording of the conversation between AB and the undercover was played in the courtroom. AB pretty much nailed the coffin. He admitted outrightly that he shot Red Bull. He stated that he had beef with Red Bull and shooting him on sight was his plan all along. AB even explained that he used a 38 pistol because he didn't want to leave any shell casings. While Kells was the one who used the 40 Glock, he also revealed that he shot Red Bull at least two times. However, AB never mentioned Draco. He only incriminated himself and Kells, so Draco should have been let go. Well, the Popo didn't think so. Unfortunately, it only got worse for Draco from here. Despite AB and Kells clearly stating that they were both responsible for Red Bull's death, Draco was held in jail for 10 months 
and was eventually released in November of 2017. After he was released, Draco went back to making music and released arguably the best work of his career, Cold Devil. This mixtape cemented Draco's legacy in LA rap. Draco's career would continue to soar, but in March 2018, the Stink team leader was arrested again. Draco was taken to Fort Compton, a 12-story Compton courthouse that has become a cradle of gangster rap. In an interview with DJ Vlad, Draco states that he was charged with first-degree murder, five counts of attempted murder, and conspiracy to commit murder. You get charged with first-degree murder, Woo. attempted murder, and conspiracy to commit murder. Yep, first-degree murder, conspiracy, five attempted murders. Five attempted five. murders. And two gun charges. The cops also tried to pin gang affiliations on Draco by using his beef with another rapper, RJ, to prove that he had a motive for murder. RJ is a member of the Athens Park Bloods, and prosecutors built their case on the claim that AB told the informant that they went to the party looking for RJ. They even claimed that Draco's lyric on the song Flex Freestyle, where he said, I got RJ tied up in the back, is proof he wanted to kill his ops. But the Fed's case became even more comical when RJ clearly stated in an interview with No Jumper that he wasn't even meant to be at the party. How do you feel about uh, the, the, the cops saying that Draco was trying to line you up? Um, uh, I believe that, you know, cops gonna do what a cop, a cop gotta do. Uh, they got jobs too. But, uh, the, you know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't supposed to be at that show. I wasn't supposed to be at that show and nobody... The show that they're saying that he was nobody sending me. someone to kill you at or whatever, yeah. Nobody called me. Nobody called me to be there. You feel me? Nobody... Um, so, for one, like, you gotta, you gotta go through people to get to me. Um, you gotta go through people to get to me anyway, so ain't not anybody just gonna call me. So let's put things in perspective. The man who Draco was supposedly going to target at the party stated that he wasn't even going to be there at all and that he didn't believe Draco wanted to kill him. And the guys who were responsible for Red Bull's death also stated that he wasn't involved in the shooting in any way possible. So under normal circumstances, this means the cops no longer had a case against Draco and he should have been released. However, he was given no option of bail. The rapper was depressed and even tweeted that he no longer wanted to be a rapper. But it seemed that this tweet only made matters worse for Draco. Draco was put in solitary confinement for 24 hours a day and was allowed to only go out for a few breaks. He was in the hole for almost a year, and by the 10th month, Draco started hallucinating, thinking that the walls were closing in and that the rooms started getting smaller. He was eventually acquitted of the murder charge in July 2019 but he still wasn't released after that. Instead, the DA refiled the charges of criminal gang conspiracy and shooting from a motor vehicle, the same charges Draco had just beaten. He was kept in jail for almost another year, and Draco wasn't released until he accepted a plea deal in which he pled guilty to shooting from a vehicle, a crime Draco stated that he never committed. After he was released, Draco would return to the studio doing what he does best, by dropping hits. But while his career was growing, Draco's beef with the IFB became even deadlier. He continued to diss him in many of his songs, especially with his popular line, he's not coming back, and that's that. This line was clearly referring to the death of Red Bull, and as one Draco was fond of using. But his beef with the Inglewood Bloods became worse after he dropped the song, Ingle Weird. The song included several lines, such as turn the suburbs of Inglewood to a gym factory. Know a lot of dudes told in Inglewood, y'all condoning snitching. The stink team run LA, you gotta come better. With lyrics towards IFB, the beef between Draco Inglewood had reached a breaking point, and it seemed like just a matter of time before something definitive happened. Draco arrived at the Bank of California Stadium in his Rolls Royce Dawn to perform in his hometown in what would probably be the biggest show of his career. Draco had an entourage of six men and one security guard who were all searched and stripped of any weapons. At around 8.30 p.m., Draco was backstage chilling with his homies when someone yelled, The Stink Team. And this is what started the fight that led to Draco's death. Some rumors even claim the person who caused the fight wasn't even a member of the Bloods, but instead a member of the Black P-Stones. While other fans believe his death was simply retaliation for Red Bull's murder, but irrespective of who was responsible for his death, two things can't be denied. Draco made his impact and is a legend in LA, 
and Draco would still be alive if he had steered clear of street beef and focused on his music. But what's y'all think? Was Draco falsely prosecuted? And why was he really targeted? Leave your comments below and let us know what you think. If you like what you saw, make sure to check out this next one. Click like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.